Okay, all right, let's go. 29 September 2021, Wednesday. Powell, a dangerous man? Wow, I didn't know that. Now, we all know that Jerome Powell has done a pretty decent job if you compare just the stock market going up. But if you ask me whether did he really do a good job as a Federal Reserve, I say based on the objective of making the stock market recovery, he done that. But the US economy as a whole is definitely facing a lot of problems. And you can see today or uh, yesterday, okay, that the 10 year yields are climbing, just climbing up. And because it's climbing up itself, well, right? That I told you before, the NASDAQ will be hit. And truth be told, the NASDAQ got hit. The bear rampage growth stocks. Now, growth stocks are all the NASDAQ counters. And that was exactly what happened last night. Okay. So that is the reason why tonight, uh, today itself, sorry, my bad. There's a lot of things to share with you. Let's stay tuned. Okay. Now, first of all, yesterday we can see that the rising US uh, Treasury yields way on the tech stocks. Now, I told you guys that you know this will happen, right? So if you remember that I actually tell you that if let's say the US yield goes up, technology shares will come down. And I told you that NASDAQ will come down quite a fair bit. If you remember that, can you key spot on a NASDAQ or NASDAQ spot on? Can you do that? Okay. That means that you, the, the NASDAQ itself, right? You can see really, really that I, I, I was spot on on NASDAQ. And of course, you can see across the board, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, all went down by 2.5% to 3%. Okay, you can see that. And of course, uh, we have very incredible Warren, not Warren Buffer, but the senator, okay, came in and said that he is a dangerous person and it, then she opposed his renomination. Okay. And uh, this is where she is. This is the lady Warren. She's a senator and she's definitely very, very pissed off. If you actually look at this, uh, you can see that there is a face off between them itself. Can you see that? That was what happened yesterday. Oh my goodness. Okay, a very incredible face off. And you can see the Dow Jones collapsed. Basically, the, the, Dow, the Dow Jones collapsed. And the thing is, the Dow Jones came down 569 points, but more important was the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ was down more than 2%. Okay, um, it's almost 3%, about 423 points. Now, do you understand this? The Dow Jones is 34,000 points. The NASDAQ is 14,000 points. We don't know the difference of 20,000 point difference. But in terms of magnitude of sell-off, the number is about the same. That means that it's a very big movement, all right? So would this continue? Well, it's very, very simple. If the selling is because of the yield, then definitely as the yield climbs higher, there's a higher chance or good chance that the NASDAQ will go down further. But again, do understand this. We have seen this episode before. We know what will happen next. Most likely, Jerome Powell and friends, they will likely come in and, you know, they may do something like buying up the bonds. So what is happening right now is that the yield is going up because the bond price is coming down, right? So if they continue to buy back more bonds, the yield price, the yield will come back down again. So that, that's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a way to manipulate this. So I'm not half surprised that you're going to do this in the near term. So watch out for this move, okay? All right? And of course, if you remember, I told you about what we concern on our Dow Jones uh, chart. I told you that as the price goes higher, right? If our KSI happened to be red, I told you that the market cannot lose the uh, previous low. And I mentioned to you the previous low yesterday was 34,775. I mentioned that if the Dow Jones loses 34,775, there will be some selling. And true be told, you can see what happened last night. <clears throat> the um, the market broke the low here itself, which is 34,775, and the Dow Jones collapsed all the way down to a low of about 34,200 plus. So, which means that the market went down another 500 points after the level that I mentioned. So, you see that, guys, you can really make a lot of money watching my MAO. You just have to follow through. So, I'm not too sure how many of you have made money from the Dow. If you have made money from the Dow Jones, please uh, key right now, profited from Dow. Okay, if you have made money from the Dow Jones, can key profited from Dow. I, I did some, so that's why I can key there. So, I also hope that you guys have done it, okay? So, this is what is happening right now in the US market and I, I'm quite happy that it's spot on. And of course, you can remember that I did say during one, one of our little conversation in the ending under the sun, um, the, when the yield was going up from 1.3% to 1.5%, people will say that, how come the yield goes up, the market haven't react? I told you that if you were focusing on the banks, but, but, but sooner or later, once you go to about 1.6%, the movement will come in. And true be thought, it's already here itself. That's why, again, 
This is why, you know, MAO is not only just about um, Cal rectoring, rectoring, rectoring. It's all about actually getting all the market news in advance. And then after that, utilize it on the market. And, you know, you have the big picture with you. That is the main point of MAO. So the value of MAO is about that. Okay. All right. And of course, I did mention that the Nikkei, remember, I told you that what will happen if the dollar, I mean, if the if the market will come down, the Nikkei will drop down to 29,780. You remember that? And I gave you the number and at the time the Nikkei was 30,000. I said that if the price will come down, Nikkei will drop down to 29,780. And of course, what happened? The Nikkei, really, look at it. The craziness of it. Look at the way the Nikkei closed yesterday. Oh, my goodness. Look at it. The number is almost identical. Here put 29,780. Look at the closing, 29,775. Oh my God, this is a rate. This is really crazy stuff. And that is a reason why our technical analysis is pretty decent. Not only that we are spot on, we can really, really, really do that. Okay, guys. So this is all the thing that we can, I can, I mean, this is what happened yesterday only, right? 28th of September yesterday. And look at the accuracy, it's really credible. Okay, guys. All right, so that's why pay attention to MAO. My job is to give you the best and you uh, you just have to follow through and make some money out of it, okay? All right, once again, thank you for that spot on uh, messages from Fred, Cheng Kui and Anthony. Okay, let's go. So joke of the day is that we can fix anything. Now, this is actually an old joke. I saw this before, but nonetheless, it's not right. This is what Yellen is telling the Congress right now. You better pump in some money raise the debt ceiling. If not, it's all right. This is going to be a big, big problem because the US economy definitely is in shadow. Yesterday, the consumer index came down again and that really, really tell investors that, you know what? We are having a real problem here. Yes, if you pump in more dollar, it might cost, it may recover this. It's like duct tape, but that it may actually, uh, it may be really uh, able to help the market, but it will not I mean, it will not recover the market. It only just temporarily just make sure that it holds, but it will not recover the market. And this is something that we all know the fact, all right? So my job is to be the chartist, the analysis, the analyst, and then share things with you. End of the day, you make a final call, all right? Thank you once again, Jerry, Kelza. Okay, thank you so much, <laughs> okay? All right, my job is to share all this with you, all right? Disclaimer as usual, accept the above, and then you have to identify me, thank you. All right, now the Hang Seng Group, again, as it's growing very nicely as well, and people come to the office. Now, it's okay to come to the office as long as we keep our social distancing, we put on masks, and of course, must be fully vaccinated, okay? As long as you follow the thing, you're fine, right? And of course, students are coming in and they are making money on their own. Yesterday, we have a pretty uh, mixed result. We have winning, we have losses. So apparently, some, some students make money, some make quite a bit of money at $200, $300. Some students actually lost money, but my point is this, end of the day is that as long as overall you make money, that's the most important thing. Overall, you make money. All right, so you can see that these are all the latest update. Right? Every day I will update this and you can, you can see that, right? Uh, people are really trading and they're putting their trades in to share with us here, okay? Okay, so let's look at the USA uh, economic calendar today. Now, but before that itself, now, yesterday, the consumer confidence was 109.3. Oh, 109.3, okay? So the previous one was 115.2, and they were forecasting something lower, okay? But the number was way lower than they were expecting, okay? So the thing is this, okay? Tonight, we have the um, pending home sales. Now, the market... Uh, previously was minus 1.8%, right? But the market this time on is expecting 1.4% positive. So again, it seems like, right, you know, if they're looking at a positive number, if the market come on negative, the market may actually shake a little bit, okay? So if you look at it over the last few months, you can see pretty clear. Over the last few months, right, majority of time is in the negative side. Only during the uh, July period, it went up pretty high. So my point is this, I believe that the market will still be down today, in my opinion, okay? All right, so this is the, my view, okay? But anyway, this is all guessing game, and yesterday, who guessed correctly? Let's take a look. Now, yesterday I said, right, what will be the consumer confidence tonight? And I said that the winner will take 3.8 coin, and it must be a perfect guess, meaning that the number must be perfect. So unfortunately, uh, no one got it, but actually Melvin go and, uh, 
Tan Bing Guan almost got it, okay? Me 109.3, they actually share in between, okay? They actually share in between, okay? But because we received must be a perfect guess. So Melvin and Tan, apology, I can't give you the prize, but no worry, we snowballed to 6.8 ADA coin right now, okay? So today, uh, I wouldn't give any, I wouldn't call for you to guess because there's nothing much to guess today, but maybe tomorrow, uh, GDP or the manufacturing PMI could do that again. But again, good call, Melvin and Tan Bing Guan, right? You're so accurate. Well done. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So let's look at the US market right now. The US market, as you can see right now, the US market just been down by 570 points. It tried to recover about 2 a.m. last night, but eventually it come to selling. All right. So what happened? Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Wait up. Oh, Anna. Okay, let's go. Now, Nasdaq tanks 2.8% in worst day since March, okay, as yield spike hit tech stocks, all right? So what actually happened? Let's take a look. Okay, first of all, it's all right. As the treasury yields goes up, companies like tech stocks, okay, those growth counter, they'll be affected because they borrow a lot of money. They need a lower, lower uh, interest, okay, to actually make sure their profit is there. So the, over the last five years, okay, last five years, especially during the pandemic time in 2020, because of all the QE money, all the QE dollar and low yield itself, right? That definitely helped the technology company to make a lot of money. But again, the problem is this, is that despite you can do all this thing yourself, okay, but once the cost has to come in, right, people will get a bit worried. So what happened is that the NASDAQ is up to fall, 2.83%, okay? So now we are only at 1.567%, for the 10-year yield and already people getting very worried. So I was telling you all lot, what if the number goes higher? So let me just bring to you the chart right now. If the market goes higher, how does it look like? Okay. Okay. As you can see right now on the 10-year yield, this is what happened on 1.5% back in July. They went down the low in August, it bottom at 1.15% and then now have recovered. And you can see the last few weeks in fact okay the the movement is really really incredible all right really pretty fast so if you look at it this is the uh trading view and i bring you the 10 year yields to show it to you a bit clearer you can see that this is what's happening right now it's still moving it's at 1.555 percent right now okay so the thing is this i still believe in my technical analysis remember i've given you my technical analysis on this 10 year yield i mentioned that i believe that we will get to see 1.6 percent Okay, pretty soon. And I think that it's already happening. And once we hit the 1.6%, it probably gonna stay there for a while. And then the next thing next year, if the market couldn't hold inflation, this will happen. Now think about this in a very simple analogy here. Okay, is that at current this point now, the NASDAQ dropped by about 400 points. Okay, something like this. So if the NASDAQ, if the market goes up to here, it's gonna drop another 400 points maybe. And if it goes up to this point here itself, right, whereby probably the yield can go at 1.9%, wow, I cannot imagine. So that's why people who are seeing this, they can see very clearly that there is a breakout from this point here. Trend line is really a triangle breakout. So the probability of coming up to here itself at 1.8% is actually pretty, pretty, pretty possible. So that's why I believe that 1.6% is going to be like within a couple more days. And 1.8% will be like probably by December. So unless again, let me just correct myself. Let me just inform you, unless the Jerome Powell and friends decided that, you know, let's just buy more bonds again to suppress the market. Because it did happen before. When the, in March to May period, when the 10 year yields went up to 1.7%, after that is out, right? Jerome Powell and friends came in and said that, you know what? With all the tools in the kitty and we can able to do that. And truth be told, they drive the, the yield down, they drove the yield down, okay? But the market found that this is not going to be sustained and the market did a bottom up and we can see that the market recovered. So all I'm saying is this, if let's say now, there is some people pretty upset with Jerome Powell and Jerome Powell next term is in February next year. And let's say, let's say he has decided to hold the handbrake, decided not to buy any more bonds, then it's going to be a very clear cut that the yields will actually will go higher by itself, you know that? Because that means the guy is no longer buying. 
because he probably want to, to probably take, he may be careful. But of course, if he get renominated, then he will come in and probably exercise this again. So that's the reason why, uh, again, yesterday we have this little uh, ongoing problem here. So you can see on the side itself, right? We also have the Senate Republican blocking a House pass bill. And also we have Janet Yellen actually warning the Congress and of course, there's some little problem now with the Biden massive infrastructure plan. So, so face some uncertainty. So basically, there was a lot of things that weighed down the market yesterday. But I think that the yield is still the one that stand up. Okay, so let's just revisit what happened yesterday on the US Dow Jones with the TWB chart. Okay, first of all, this is the opening price yesterday. Now, we all know the fact is this, guys. I mean, this is something that we all know and I've shared with you many, many times. Whenever you see this happening, whereby, remember, if I tell you that this, uh, if the market opening price is below P2, all right, in a normal, normal uh, pivot, below OP, below P2, what should you do? Can you tell me now, guys? Below OP, below P2, what should we be looking out for? Please tell me now, right in now in the, this, uh, this, uh, the Facebook uh, group chat, all right? Because this is always what we learn. And someone yesterday, the KSI was red in color. So definitely, you don't need to ask me. You just have to follow one simple step to trade yesterday. As long as the market is below OP, below P2, and some of the day chart KSI is red, there's only one, one thing to do yesterday is to look out for CCYR, yellow to red and sell, except Lee, Brian, Angeline, and Anthony. Yes, indeed, that was what you need to do. Guys, this is not the first time you hear me online telling you this, and this is not going to be the last time also. So if we follow the rules, how we are traded, very simple, let's wait. So as long as the market goes below OP, below P2, right? OP, as you can see, is here. All right, what we need to do is this. We need to be below P2, right? So any C, C, Y, R. Every yellow turns to red, below OP, below P2, we sell, correct? So that is what we will do, we will sell. And then after that, you will sell again. After that, you sell again, then you sell again. Now, during this period of time, maybe you didn't make much money. You said you probably lost money, but if you basically trust what you believe, you sell again, this is the one that rewards you beautifully. And what was even more incredible, we have a KCB at 34,265. And the market actually came there and stopped there as if that they recognized this number 34,265. And all these numbers are available on your TWB system. It's all available. And the market seemingly know that they exist and they know where to stop. That is why, how can you not make money from the market? Think about this for a moment. This is really incredible. Now, of course, I did to you that, right? Now, a lot of people have been asking me, hey, how come the equity market is coming down, but the gold also is coming down? Now, I already tell you and I pre-warn you that the gold will likely be sacrificed. As long as the equity market is coming down itself, right, there is a possibility that the gold will be sacrificed, the first thing. Now, on the second thing as well, right, if you take notice of this, okay, I'll bring it for you right now. You look at this uh, US dollars. Let me just bring to you US dollar. Look at it, this is the US dollar. And I told you right, likely is that the US dollar might be going up because if there's gonna be any form of tapering, there will be, the US dollar will strengthen. I also shared it with you, right? I told you the US dollar may strengthen. And I told you that if that's the case itself, right? The dollar will pressurize the gold and gold market will be not, will be affected. And again, all these have manifested accordingly. Remember that? Yeah, so the thing is this, I, I mean, basically you can go through my MAO itself. I did tell you that, the, if the dollar starts to go higher, right, then what will happen? The, the gold will come down. And really, it happened last night. Okay, guys, you remember. So I even gave you a specific figure yesterday, 1728. I told you that if gold is to come down, it will come down to 1728. Remember? All right, do you remember that? I told you that if gold come down, it will go down to 1728. Remember? All right, I did say that because that is the KCB level and I told you that if gold come down, it will come down. So yesterday, you can see that the KSI was red in color. So when the market hit the pivot too, now yesterday was inverse pivot. 
I told you before, inverse pivot work is a very simple way. If the market stays above the P2, in this case, it will be strengthening up. But if it reverse downwards, right, it will be very heavy selling. And I told you before, with the KSI rate, the selling will be even double. So that's why during yesterday, uh, Telegram, I keep on replying to you guys. I say that, look, guys, uh, the, 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 this uh, um, goal might be coming down. There will be some selling. It will likely be going down to about 1728. And I think both myself and Susan, we keep on reminding you on this, remember? Yes, indeed. Okay, so let me just bring it to you guys. If you can take a look here as well, guys, take a look. Remember, yes, this is what happened yesterday, right? I, I told you, right, I, I wrote there. I said that if gold continue to drop, it can go to the KCB 1728. Now, at the time of writing and posting, it was already 1738 already. I tell you that will be more selling to come. And of course, what happened, uh, people make money, okay? And indeed, it's all right, people make money. And this is what people did. So very, very good one, say yes. So people all make money because I, I told them that this is what you can do. So guys, really, you know, this is what you guys need to prepare yourself, okay? Our TWB system really is a world, is a very powerful system, all right? You can see that I'm able to do MEO every day. It speaks for itself already, okay? All right, cool, right? Huh? Okay, so what happened? You can see overnight, uh, the gold market basically uh, hit the pivot two, couldn't sustain its upside. Once it come back down, the selling really, really follow through. And of course, at every yellow to red, you sell, yellow red, you sell, yellow red, you sell. You see that? You make money all the way. And the crazy part is this, it really hit KTR minus three and stopped there and instantly rebounded. Again, KTR minus three is a mathematic formula created by the system. And yet the goal seemingly follow, hit that point and then recover as if that they actually know KTR minus three exists. You see, a lot of traders, they will see the chart coming down, going up, they draw the technical line and then they just will figure and guess. But for us itself, right, we are so pampered, we already have the numbers on our handphone, or sorry, on our list laptop. We just have to follow through. So this is why, again and again, when the goal was coming down to 1728, you can see on the screen, we call for buy up. We say that the goal will recover and true be told, goal instantly recover to 1740. $12 in been just 45 minutes. Crazy, really, really incredible. You know, that's the thing why we are really very optimistic on our future, but we just want to see, we realize that not everybody is able to appreciate something like this. So we only hope that through all the MAOs every morning, you guys can see the light of this and look forward to trade together, okay? All right, so I have some local news right now. Today, a little bit lengthier because we started a bit late and also I said a lot of news to share with you. So Hong Kong trading is all right. We'll come to that later, okay? You guys, so those are Hong Kong traders, you just follow through and do what you need to do. I'll come back to Hong Kong later, okay? Now, the thing is this, Angie Merkel, Angela Merkel, finally, yes, okay, we lost the election, period. That's it, we move on, all right? Very... Very good leadership, I put it this way. Although she lost, but then again, she accepted it and she wanted to move on, okay? So you can see that the DAX market reacted instantly. Yesterday, the DAX collapsed, okay? Down by about almost 300 points. Now, we can see very clearly that the DAX itself was going up recently, but then again, the news came in, and of course, plus the US Dow Jones was down. It pressured down the market. I kind of suspect that it will hit down to 15,000 I mentioned yesterday. Let's see what happened. Now, for Singapore front, this is pretty scary. 2,236 new COVID cases. Now, this is really crazy. At one stage, we have 36 people, then 100 plus people, then 200 plus people, then slowly became 500. Then after it jumped to 1,000. Now, today is 2,000. Of course, out of this 2,200, 500 came from the dormitories, but it's still 2,200. So the thing is this, this is really very scary. And of course, luckily and fortunately, among of these thousands of people, about 209 cases are kind of seriously ill. They require oxygen supplementation, uh, supplementation all right? So of course, uh, majority of them are actually um, senior folks above 60 year old. That's why undeniable, we need to be very careful with our older folks, right? So you can see the numbers is a, wow, look at the chart, it's just climbing and climbing and it seems to be multiplying. And this is why I felt that, right, we should able to see 3,000 by end of this weekend. It's pretty, pretty clear that uh, our minister has already got the idea of it. That's why a couple, about two weeks ago, they already warned us that we may see 2,000 to 3,000 and seemingly, probably they know the number better than us. 
All right, now Senator Warren calls federal chairman a dangerous man. Oh, wow. And she really opposed his uh, renomination. All right, so uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren charged that Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell has an, led, led an effort to weaken the national, the nation, sorry, uh, banking system. And she definitely opposed. Okay, this is pretty, pretty incredible. Look at what she said. Okay, your record gives me grave concern. Oh my goodness. Okay. And she says that right now, the current movement now, the regulatory bodies movement now is exactly like what happened back in 20, 2008 and 9 during the Wall Street uh, sell down during the Lehman crisis. Okay, so apparently now this lady, all right, is definitely very upset and pissed with this uh, Jerome Powell. Okay, definitely we can see that it's full of uh, unhappiness again, okay, this lady. So why is she saying that? There is a reason for that. She says that Jerome Powell is just very lucky that the bank so far have avoid major problems. But she cited that the Archigo's uh, capital management right collapsed recently, right? And the banking industry basically is all uh, right, so much movement, but yet it doesn't hit the market. So she found that Jerome Powell is just very lucky. Okay. But this is not going to continue. She feel that right, this 2008, the, the seeds of 2008 itself, right, is planted. And then again, it may just resurface. So that's why she said, I came to Washington after the 2008 to make sure that nothing like this will ever happen again. And I think that, you know, she's a very, very strong woman. But the thing is, is maybe she can talk to Nancy Pelosi also at the same time. <laughs> okay, that's my view. Lah. All right. So, of course, with that happened, 10 year yield showed up, as I said earlier as so. well. So, what is the main thing is that investors are getting concerned because of the inflation pressure, the rising energy prices in Europe. And of course, the, the spike on this energy cost will definitely give the some of the sector a run of money. And of course, very important thing is that there's someone using this Schiller P, which I've been using. I tell you guys that now it's at 19.7, it's pretty high. And of course, the conference board of consumer confidence is then now lower than expected. Okay. And the thing is this, I say again, if they want to use the one trillion dollar infrastructure bill, that means there'll be demand of dollar. I repeat. If they were to basically want the infrastructure plan to get into the picture, then of course the demand for dollar will be there. And that's again the reason why the dollar has went up. So with all these things added together, it's all right, undeniable. We just hope and pray that today China Evergrande will make payment. Okay, but of course we know that the last one they didn't do, so I'm not gonna be half surprised that it will do today. So apparently it's all right, a lot of companies are getting pretty worried and they know that good chance that they may not get their money. I mean, this is something that we can also see pretty clear, right? So you can see that now that uh, the chance of defaulting is going to be very high. So actually, if today they do not pay their next payment, which is an a interest payment, then we can say goodbye uh, to the whole thing here. Now, okay, let's have some important market information for references. This is very important because today got a lot of key information and actually Tom Lee's message. Take a look. Now, first of all, we know that Janet Yellen really wants the Congress to raise the debt ceiling. And I think that that is a very good joke that I think one of you guys have posted regarding about the, <laughs> the shit in the house. All right, when it's the, your house is full of shit suddenly because of all the uh, sewage problem, do you actually take out the shit or you raise the, the ceiling? <laughs> I think that is a very good one. And I believe that they're going to raise it up anyway. Why is that so? Because this is, this is, this is US, come on, man. Okay, they are not going to just let it just let it die. They will just have to raise the ceiling. So what's happening right now? Uh, Janet Yellen is saying that okay, they better do it, or else we could be the first default. Okay, first ever U.S. default. Okay, and this is going to be very have severe consequences. But like I say, it will be raised. Yeah, in my opinion, as well, I'm very confident that they will do it. It will be very incredible if they don't do it. Okay, so. Because the full faith and the credit of US will be impaired, and of course, this will cause a financial crisis and even an economic crisis. All right, so I really think that after a while later, Congress will just say yes. Because this is what happened back then in 2008, 2009, when the I mean, Barack Obama went in and asked them to give them money, right? The Congress was so adamantly saying no, no, no. But eventually, when they tell them, look, if you want to take responsibility of a default, then you want to be the label as a bad guy, then go ahead. And of course, what happened? Two trillion dollars came in over three QEs. So sorry, guys. I'm gonna see. I expect this to be raised. Very, very clear. Okay. All right. Now, of course, the yields going up, the tax shares will be hit, right? So there are some key technical points to watch out for. Okay. 
Now, first of all, itself, right? Yesterday we saw a lot of decline in Amazon, all the banks counter like short. Okay. So this is the SP chart that they've been using using the 50-day moving average, and we can see very clearly that what happened is pretty clear that every time we hit the 50-day moving average itself, the market always rebound, right? Okay. Then when it came down, what happened? It came down first, then after that, rejected, recover, try to stay up a little bit, but now come back up. Now, this is a very classic sign of failure. That means that if it's a moving average, the price uh, always bounces off. And then after that, it finally, it went down. What you don't want to see is a market recover, touch back this point, because if you touch back this area and it doesn't go up, right? Usually the selling will be doubled, okay? The selling will be doubled. So I'll explain more in detail later on with our own technical chart, okay? But that is a real concern right now. And traders are saying this, this is a very important 50-day moving average. And they feel that if I say the market stays below this key level, this may actually make more selling to come forward, which I think that it will likely will happen. So Santoli, the market correspondents, do a very, very good detail sharing. He says that the 19-year German bond yield shows that it's a bit of a worry problem, okay? And of course, the S&P 500 now, it is like, you know, off about five, almost 5%. The Nasdaq is off by 5%. And they say that, okay, 50-day moving average broke, but don't worry, we have 100-day moving average, <laughs> okay? So you can see that, okay, what he's trying to say is that don't worry, okay, even though the market has broke the 50-day moving average, okay, but we have seen it before, that once it hit the 100-day moving average, it will always rebound. So we are now pretty, pretty near to the 100-day moving average. Huh? So what can I say that, okay, don't worry, this will be good, it will stay. Uh, okay, so the question is after this, if you don't stay, what happened? Then you come up with the 200-day moving average, huh? <laughs> okay? And they tell you that it will stay. Okay, so let's see what happened. I'm just gonna laugh. Okay, all right. And um, but the thing is, this he covered himself very well. He said that there's a faint whiff of the 2011 saga because back then itself we have economic. Re there's a there's concern of economic reform, right? Whether it's getting sustained. Then the time remember in 2011 we saw the oil price going up. I told you before, and I told you that at the time also we have the debt ceiling drama, which happened also at the same time. I said that's why. Undeniable 2011 and 2021, this 10 years different, right? But the way it's moving and some of the stuff, seemingly there's a lot of resemblance. That is the reason why, um, if you remember, after that itself, right? Eventually the rate hike came in. Yeah, so actually we can have a bit of idea of what will probably be happening, okay? So of course, with the only opening momentum in US, the tight job market, the income gains, all these are not really performing. That is where people are getting a bit worried, okay? So, of course, the, the rest itself, like market brand, VIX, obviously, they will be uh, not the negative. Lah. But then again, traders who think that, okay, no, I, I still believe I'm moving average. I think I'm going to buy soon. Then, yeah, by all means, go ahead. I will rather stay on the side and watch, okay? Now, Jeremy uh, Graham says that this US stock market is in a magnificent bubble and it's crazier than 20, 1929 and year 2000. Now, Year 2000 is a NASDAQ crisis, okay? For those who are younger folks, okay, this is what happened. But for those who, can, who are still around, 19, 19, 20, 1929 is where the recession was, okay? That's where the stock market literally collapsed. And this is a year whereby Jesse Livermore made a lot of money. Okay, so Jeremy says that, no, nope, this is going to go down. Now, of course, you may find very familiar on YouTube, right? Some of the time. Now, this guy is uh, is actually a widely followed investor, okay? He has a pretty decent market uh, track record. He also, he, I foresaw the 2008 market downturn. He also saw the dot-com bubble bursting. But again, I say big picture, people can be spot on, but whether it, he benefit out of it, right? That's another thing that usually we use it as a form of <laughs> record check checking. Huh? But nonetheless, as well, right? He is very clear. He felt that, right, that currently now the S&P forward price earning is about 22, which is actually the highest level since year 2000, okay? So he felt that, right, this is the perfect three times squeeze in the century, okay? That means that he built that, right, within 100 year three bubble, 1929, year 2000, and today. That is what he felt. And the thing is this, they tend to last about six years, okay? So wow, okay, so he's trying to mean that what, the market will go down for six years? Nah, I don't think so. I believe that the market will be down for probably one year. 
max top one year and that's it. Okay, the market will just recover from there itself. That is what I feel one year. Okay. Right, but again, let's say we have good stuff coming on. Tom Lee, okay, Tom Lee says that, hey, no problem, man. Rising bond yields are not an equity market killer. In fact, he felt that the stock will rally into the year end. Okay, so Tom Lee himself says September will be a very good month, but unfortunately, the market isn't really responding. So uh, the question is this, Tom Lee says that if September is a good month, then October will be very, very bad month. So now the September is a very bad month in a way. So how about October then? <laughs> okay. So apparently Tom Lee says that, right? The yield spike up is showing the economy is recovering. So he felt that the rate is just a headline number. If the economy is expanding and strengthening and it's pent up demand and shortage, it will cause reflation and even higher rates. So actually it's very good. Now he's actually very, very right if you look at it from another angle. It's just like telling you yourself, when, when central bank high interest rate, it's a bad thing or a good thing. Now it's a bad thing because it increased costs, but why is it, why are they hiking it? It's because the economy is actually recovering. So it's not wrong to have that view itself. And he felt that, right, this is exactly the same thing of 1950 to 1970 during a very good time. So he felt that, right, if anybody studied the market closely, it is not an equity market killer. As a matter of fact, it's actually a good thing Okay, so guys, if you want to watch a video, it's about 10 minutes, so I can't play it here as well. He is on CNBC, watch it and see what he has to say. All I can say is that this time around the head a bit messy though. <laughs> so maybe it's like he'll be stressed out. Okay, anyway, Tom Lee has been pretty accurate over the last few months, so I'll just leave it there. So in short yourself, Tom Lee say that this lower revision is actually good. He felt that right with the environment whereby the supply chain glitches. So there is price delay, there will be price increases, but after that itself, the market will recover. So in fact, to give myself right, this is just only year one, there's more to go and more to make. So that is the reason why he is very bullish. All right. So what do you think guys? Do you think that Tom Lee is uh, correct in your view? Let me write your view right now. Do you think Tom Lee is actually correct? If you think that Tom Lee is correct or you, you share the same view, please leave your comment right now. I want to see what's your view while we move to the charts okay so let's study the charts for today the bull goes smooth the bag goes grr, and the lemming goes it is different this time all right let's take a look at the market right now okay so let's take a look at the china a50 first now china a50 very interesting okay china a50 this morning um basically get up yeah get up <laughs> okay so what happened is that you can see the MLP for today is here. Okay, it's here. And um, and the downtrend is still there. Okay, the downtrend is still there. So my personal view is pretty clear. If this is the point A, point B, point C, point D, point E, we are all waiting here. Okay, we're all waiting here. If the market couldn't, uh, if the market can go up, it may test this point and see whether or not that it can actually recover. But if it fail, then of course the selling should be able to bring it down to the MA30 level, and that is 15,184 level. Okay. So uh, what do you think? All right. My my point is this: if China Evergrande today fail to pay their payment, I think that will again bring down the market. But of course, as we know that. The Chinese government are putting a lot of money back into the system and probably that was going to inspire more upside in the market. So I don't, I'm not surprised to see that uh, China market can be moving differently from the global market. But of course, after a while later, if the market cannot find uh, rooms to, to buy up the market, then of course a pullback is actually very possible. Okay, so that is what happened right now for China A50. Still be a flat right now. Let's look at the Hong Kong market. Now, Hong Kong this morning has gapped down. Hong Kong this morning has, sorry, has gapped up. Sorry, it was gapped up. And then now it's trading down. It's trading down. And do not, uh, Hong Kong itself is a doji formation yesterday. The day, two days ago, it was also a doji. Can you see that? It was a doji. And the market chose the downside instead. So yesterday is a doji. So when the market also chose the downside, it is very, very possible. Now the Hong Kong market now is down by 200 points from the opening price. 
So traders do not, I did tell you that if Hong Kong market is to go lower, in my book to sell, right, we do expect to see Hong Kong going down to this point here. Let me just uh, do this for you. Remember, I told you that if Hong Kong market is to go down, Hong Kong will go down to this point. Remember that, yeah, in fact, I, I shared this with you. I said Hong Kong will come to this point here. And this point is this, this level. Let me write it down for you, write it big for you. Uh, it's 23,000. 451. I repeat, I believe that the Hong Kong market will come down to 23,451. Okay, All right, that is my personal view on how low Hong Kong would be going. Okay, all right, so that's my personal view on Hong Kong. All right, so I want to reward everybody here. Okay, all right, now from now till the next 30 seconds, if you can type this letter HK. HK23451. Okay, type it round. Okay, you can follow this and type this. Okay, if you can type this 23451 right now, copy and paste and put it down there. And if Hong Kong really, really goes down to this figure, 23451. Okay, whoever type this right now, okay, and what happened? I will give everybody, yes, I will give everybody 3.8. Ada coin. I repeat myself, okay? That means that if let's say Hang Seng really, really drop all the way down to 23,451 in the next couple of weeks, okay? I don't know when, that doesn't matter. But if it comes down to 23,451, whoever key, whoever copy and paste right now, right, 23,451 Hang Seng, right? I will reward you with 3.8 Ada coin. Really? Yeah, no, no joke. I mean, as long as you copy and paste right now, you get it. But of course, it's only for people who are online right now. So if people who missed it, then too bad. Oh, why suddenly the number shoot up? <laughs> why suddenly my, my views suddenly shoot up? You all go and tell your friends. <laughs> okay, I'm going to close the door. This whole thing now in the next 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay. Wow. Wow, suddenly, why well, got so many people watching my MAO? <laughs> it was only 40 plus, it's not right. Suddenly, the number go up. <laughs> okay, all right, that's all. Okay, okay, okay. Kai, you just come in, I'll give you a chance. Kai, key hit HK 23451. Okay, five seconds more to go. Give you a bit more lingering. After that, once I draw that line, means no more already. I won't accept any more new people. Okay, da -da -dum -dum -dum. okay, done. Okay, so whichever, whoever key above that is out, right? Well, how many of you? Let me take a look. Oh, wow, so many. Oh, gosh. Okay, bankrupt. <laughs> okay, all right. So many of you. All right, okay. So from, okay, that doesn't matter. As long as you guys key this, if you say so key HK23451, all right, so many of you. Wow, all key the, this thing here itself, okay? Okay, Diana, you just came in. Uh. Okay, la, for you, la, only for you. La. Oh, Kai, la, okay. Last part. La. Okay, that's it. No more, no more. After Kai, no more. <laughs> okay, because you're not, not more. Everybody, the gun key. Okay, this is only because I want to reward you guys for coming online and listen to the morning MEO in the morning. Okay, all right. Okay, cool. La. Okay, the thing is this. We are going to go a very big revamp a very big revamp on the TWB Academy very soon, a very massive revamp, yes. Uh, because we're going to have a very strong investor coming down. Yes, a very strong investor is coming into TWB and this, this, this entity itself really see the value because they've been watching on MAO every day. This person really thinks that it's good, so he really share young people and then they're coming in. So really, we're going to have a very big revamp on how we deliver our TWB Academy and of course, is all for the better, okay? So that's the reason why we also want you guys to, you know, benefit from this, okay? All right, so watch out for the next big news. Definitely sell, right? This is going to be a very exciting time for us, okay? Okay, so Hang Seng already done and share with you if it goes down. All right, let's look at the US stock market right now. Now, the US stock market, you can see that this is really crazy, crazy stuff. Yesterday, I told you that the MA200, is at 34,263. Look at it. Look at it. The market really stopped there. Now it's not the MA. See, this now you can see the MA line is higher, right? Because of the mathematics. 
But yesterday we mentioned this number, 34,263. And look at the low of the day. Oh my goodness, it really touches there and rebounded. Again, as if that the market actually know that level. And of course, you can look at the main, the thing of what I shared yesterday, the MA30, the MA30 was at 34,810. 34,810, that was a level. So what happened? Take a look as a recap, okay? You can see that right now, right? The thing is this, yesterday, huh? yesterday, the market opening price was here, okay? And then it came down, touches the MA30 twice. Can you see that? And then it went up, okay? So it went up, we didn't bother, we make money on the long side. But when the price came down, it loses the MA30 and started to sell, okay? And when you go down all the way, look at it. It stopped perfectly at the MA200 three times. My goodness. It actually hit that three times and three times after that, it recovers. Can you see that? Wow. Amazing, right? So you can see this is how powerful our technical analysis is. Whether it's conventional, whether it's TWB, we can always backtest and the number is always the same in terms of like the way it reacts, the way it uh, move around there is really incredible, okay? So now with that itself, right, let's just look at today's market, okay? Let's just be right objective here, okay, let's look. Now, first of all, the MA30 today is down here at 34,734, so it's a bit far away, but the MA200 is very nearby. The MA200 is pretty nearby, so let's track down the number, shall we? Okay, so for MA30 is 34,734, okay? The MA200 is 34,300. Okay, so what do we, uh, what can we uh, gather from here? So, so pretty simple, everybody, objectively, yeah? Um, hold on, MLP is here. Okay, MLP will be, yeah, somewhere here, okay. Okay, so what happened, everybody? Let's take a look. Okay, let me just find the right color. Okay, now this is the BNB, right? This is the BNB. And then this is the RL, this is the SL, right? The market basically broke the RL and went up all the way. It basically means the uh, one time one just by a few, uh, probably about 10, 100 points like that. Okay, it missed by a little bit. And then after that, it U-turned, because I see a long tail came down, it U-turned and came down. It broke the MA30. So we all know that when it broke the MA30, usually there is some follow-through selling. So I cannot deny that. But at the same time, you can see that there is an MA200 is very nearby. And the market shows its impact of support. Okay? So could to be very clear. If the Dow Jones come down to 34,300, we are we suspect that the Dow will be supported and then recover. Okay, I suspect that this will likely be happening. So if anybody want to buy into the Dow Jones later on, look out for 34,300. That will be the support level that we we think it will it will be supported. Okay, 34,300. But if the thing is this, if the market loses 34,300 today, oh, that is going to be bad. The selling can bring it down to the 95% level again. Now we saw it before, it came down to 95% and then it rebounded strongly. Can you see that? So this 30, 95%, 33,835 will be a very important level. So I suspect that, right, if the Dow Jones can stay above 34,300, all right, it should be going up. So if some traders say, Kel, can I just buy now? at 34,370 right now. And then I put a stop loss at 34,290. So that means I reach 70 points. If I get it correct, I may have it going up all the way up again, right? So I can make about 700 points from that. So 70 point downside versus 70 point, 700 points upside. Okay, makes some sense, right? If you believe that the stock market is gonna recover. But on a flip note, if let's say the market loses 34,300, then there is a possibility to see 33,835, which is about 500 points. So traders, too prone to it itself, right? I'll write it down for you uh, as a suggestion. Okay, Dow. Okay, Dow itself, right? If above OP, okay, and above 
So before 300, the market may rebound back to 34,734. But if the index goes below 34,300, then it might be heading towards 33,835. Here we go. All right, so I gave you two sides of what will happen to the Dow Jones and let's see whether which side the market chose. Huh? All right, whether you choose upside or downside, the numbers are all given to you already. So guys, you'll just, you know, utilize it and make money from there, okay? Yeah. Okay, so that is a Dow Jones for now. Okay, let's look at the Dow Jones weekly chart. Well, the Dow Jones weekly chart doesn't look that nice, okay? Obviously, it has broken the support level at 34,517, but again, it's still a bit too early to call, so we watch a bit more, okay? But still, 33,199 is still my ultimate target. I still believe that we should be able to see 33,199 in the near term, okay? Maybe in another two weeks more or three weeks more, but my, my target is there. Now, if the market really goes down there, 33,199, then, of course, um, it'll be a good time to buy. Yeah, it'll be, be, be a very good time to go for buy. I believe that that will be a fairly good figure. Now we're we are now trading at 34,375 level, right? So we're talking about, wow, another difference of 1,100 1, points. So that means that the downside is for 1,100 points. Now that's a lot of money. And I think that uh, if, we, if we really follow through, we may actually get to see this done. And after that, from the bottom here itself, right, we can start to buy, okay? So I give you my view for the next three months, okay? All right, so let's look at the US market today and let's see anything that we catch on. Okay, first of all, the Dow Jones, let's take a look. Now the Dow Jones today is a CCYR. Okay, wow, okay. So first of all, the Dow Jones today is a CCYR on the day chart, okay? Yellow to red. So below OP will be a sell, below OP is sell. But this morning, we can see the Dow Jones trying to recover. In, a more, in this early morning, the Dow Jones has tried to recover already. But the KSI is red in color. So which means that the upside will be limited to KTR plus one to KTR plus two. This is something that we know as a TWB student. And did it actually happen this morning? Well, let's take a look. This morning, the Dow Jones opened, as you can see right here. It tries to go up, went past the pivot one, okay? So above OP, above pivot one is a buy. So it went up a bit more. And then after that, it couldn't hit KTR plus one. It couldn't. And then after that, now it tumbled back down. But as you can see right now live, the market has tried to recover above OP again. So maybe it's going to try again. It may going to try again. So I will say this, if the Dow goes up, breaks P1, he will likely be testing KTR plus one later, okay, later. But if the market fail and go down, the first very important support is 34,265. That's a KCB and you can see that the last three times, last like yesterday, the market touches this number and rebounded. 34,265. Every time it touches that, the market actually rebounded. So I cannot uh, deny that that could be the fourth time. The market may come down here, test, 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 and then recover again. So traders, watch out for that figure. 34,265. Okay. Okay. NASDAQ. Now, NASDAQ definitely looks very, the chart looks a little bit dangerous right now. Why do I say that? Okay. First of all, you notice that this is the highest point, right? Then this is the 95% true. Now, the last time we see this, the market actually rebounded strongly all the way. Rebounded pretty strongly all the way from the 95% mark, it rebounded and went all the way up and regained the MA30 level. But unfortunately, as you can see very clear, the market couldn't stay above it and came back down. And then it came down, down lower than the 95% mark. Now, this is not good. This is not a good sign. So I will have to share with you upfront, this is my personal view, okay? If you bring it down further, the chart, right? Okay, let's make it a little bigger so you can see this clearer. Okay, 
So what I'm suspecting is this, okay? If you notice that the MA200 is now trading at about this point here, at about trading around 14,461, it's about 400 points away, right? And then now the market have just lost the 95% mark, right? So this is a very important technical to watch out for. So I believe this, okay? If the market stays above OP, the NASDAQ will likely go back up to test this number again, 14,933, 14,933. So likely the market will be going towards that. But if the market stays below OP and the selling kick in, the selling might be able to bring the NASDAQ down all the way to 14,460, as you can see on the MA200. Now, if the market really loses the MA200 and go down further, wow, then 14,147 will be next. 14,147 will be next. Now, I don't think the market will come down to 14,147 just like this. Right? I think it will take a while. Or the US interest, uh, the US Treasury yield will go up to 1.6%. Now, if actually, if the market really go to 1.65% to 1.7%, and if the whole idea is to take profit and there's no bond buying, no QE coming in and tapering on the table, yes, it will go down here. But if not, well, a technical rebound is kind of expected because you can see, we do see that the market has an has a indication of a technical rebound. Okay, so let's just see whether the NASDAQ will go where, but I'm not, not half surprised to see a technical rebound. But if the market really go down lower, 14460 will be the first level that I think you should consider to buy back some position. Okay, so that is the NASDAQ for you. And let's look at the NASDAQ, the, the NASDAQ day chart right now. Now the NASDAQ day chart already, we see early morning, the NASDAQ already has some development. So first of all, the opening price is between the two pivot. The pivot one itself is 14,855. You look at it today, the high of today is 14,856. So the market again noticed that our pivot one exists. And after that, when it hits there, it couldn't go higher, it got rejected, it came back down again. So that means that the pivot one has been triggered. So as long as it's been triggered, if the market continues to right above the pivot one, we should see some recovery. But do note the KSI is red in color, means that the upside will be limited to KTR plus one to KTR plus two. This one, you must make sure you understand where I'm coming from. Now on the flip note, if the market loses OP, then we have multiple KCB to watch out for, 740, 600, 552. So there are multiple KCB at the bottom here, that means that the market has a lot of support, uh, technical support at the bottom, okay? A lot of technical support at the bottom. Okay, then we have S&P 500. Now S&P 500, we saw the same thing happen. It exactly what happened like the NASDAQ, you can see the price came down, hit the 95% mark, couldn't go down further, instantly goes up. But once it goes up, right, it got rejected at the MA30, and then that's what we're seeing right now. Okay, so what are we gonna look out for for NASDAQ, about S&P today? S&P, the, SM, the MLP is here, like far away. The MA30, let's take a look. The MA30 is also pretty far away, but the MA200 is not as close as the NASDAQ one you saw. So probably it's all right. We're gonna have a bit of in-between. I'm gonna say this, my personal view is that maybe at most we're gonna see this happening. We might see this coming back down to here again, and that's 43.24. 43.24 is the 95% mark from the all time high, okay? So if it comes down, not half surprise, 43, 24 would be next, okay? But once you hit there, uh, I cannot be sure what happened. If it really goes down, max really will be here, but we'll talk about this later, like, still be fine, okay? All right, not every trade you have to enter, and you notice that I move around, not every day I would say the same thing, I emphasize the same thing. In fact, sometimes I'm on NASDAQ, sometimes Dow Jones, sometimes S&P, you can see I actually move around. Okay, so DEX, brilliant, okay? DEX is really brilliant because if you look at it, the mathematics is crazy. Now, this is the high, 100% marker. This is the low, I mean, this is 95% marker, right? You see this? Yesterday, the DEX came down and the low of the day 
actually touches the 95%. So again, all these are very technical stuff, very technical. And yesterday I told you, right, if the, if the DEX cannot cross 15,629, the DEX will come down. And true be told, the DEX missed the level by three points. With three points, the market collapsed. And of course, once it loses the MA200, it went down lower. Do you see this? Very clear, very important technical analysis. Okay, so for today, let's take a look. Now today, the MA30 will be somewhere here, pretty far away, 15,600. And interestingly, the MA200 is somewhere about the same level as yesterday. So it's about 15,400. So I suspect that if there's gonna be any recovery, it has to cross this point first. And the MLP for today will be somewhere near here. Okay, All right, that's text for you. Um, I still think that DEX will go down. I told you before, right? I think that DEX will have to go down all the way to here. Yeah, somewhere around right here. This is the technical point. The KCB over here. I believe that DEX will go down to this point again. My personal view is that DEX should be going down to 15,003 zero in the near term. Okay, that is my view on the DAX. Okay, so we have DAX, we have this, we have China A50, let's go. China A50 is still down, okay. China A50 hit the MLP this morning and now it's trading lower, trading lower. But I don't think Hong Kong is going down much. In fact, Hong Kong has been trying to recover, I see that. Hang Seng, this one, yeah, Hang Seng, this one went down. But then now it has recovered. So it's off the low. It's off the low. So, okay. So maybe there's some artificial strength. Okay? Let's take a look later on. Okay. So we have the indices done. Let's look at the Nikkei. Yeah, Nikkei. Now, Nikkei, I told you that it's a very important technical point. That's MA30. That's 29,775. And this morning, in the open, it's now trading lower. It's at 29,391 right now. Okay, doing much lower. I believe that it will come down further to this point, right, which is 28,825, okay? So I think that the, there's room for the Nikkei to drop further to 28,825, okay? This is my personal take on the Nikkei because you can see that there's still a bit of room down to go. And of course, if you put it, the Nikkei chart together with our TWB, we can see that Nikkei today, opening price is actually between the two pivot. KSI is green, but the market is coming off right now. Okay, the market is coming off right now. So the pressure across these, the market is giving, even though a strong economy or a strong market, some selling reason. Okay, so traders, watch out for that. Kind of suspect that the Nikkei may be going down to here, which is 29,125 level. Okay, so that is the Nikkei for us, and that it wraps up all the US and EU Asian equity market. Let's look at the commodities market. Okay. Oh gosh. Okay, gold continue to come down, and now we have a problem, Houston. Yeah, because you see. If we were to use the trend line that we draw a couple of days ago, okay, okay, take a look. You see, what we did was, we take this point here as a technical starting point that was in 2018. Then after that, we basically corresponded with uh, 2020, two years later. And then we have a marvelous support recently, but today we have a problem. The market actually closed below it. Okay, now one thing is that every time when the market hits down, you, know, you can see the RSI is at 30 level and lower. And uh, we are now at 36, actually. The last time we saw this, it was below 30 also, but today we are, we are at 36. So if you look at it from this technical point, that means that gold might be coming down more, okay? There might be a bit more selling in gold. I repeat, there could be more selling because the last time we see it got supported and gold went up. And after that, it did happen again, it went up, but the upside was very muted, and now it has broke below the trend line. So I believe that later on, the algorithm may come in again, may come in again. So the lowest point here, as I shared with you, the lowest point here back then was 
1685. This is the low. Okay. Now, if let's say we talk about this is the breakdown of the trend, so naturally go will go down lower. Okay, there's two prong to this. If you think that the overall trend is still up itself and you want a higher low, that means go have to stabilize between 1690 to 1695 range so that it will create a new low, but it's not going to be lower than the previous low and that maintain the uptrend in the market. But if you think that the market will have to break, has to break the 1685 and break the 61.8, then that means the goal has to go down to a probably 1681 level for it to actually find a new base. So two prong on it. Some people will say that you go to 1690 to 1695 and then rebound. Some people say that no, you had to go down a bit more to about 1681, then we can buy. So what do you think? Oh, sorry, I forgot SMP that we mentioned. Okay, sorry, my bad. Okay, so what do you think, guys? So my view is this with the US dollar um, recovery, with the current tapering issue, with the inflation current problem, we might be we might see gold going down a bit more. So I think that gold, if it cannot hold, it may come down to this point. Yeah, I think gold may come down to this point here, just to finish up the fundamental part. Okay, in my opinion. Huh? Okay, all right. Let's go back to the S&P chart. I forgot about it, sorry. <laughs> I missed out. Okay, apology. Okay, S&P chart today is interesting. S&P chart, the current movement now is above OP and above pivot one, it's a buy. Yeah, at the moment it's a buy now. So as long as the market stays above the pivot one, it's 43.59, S&P 500 should be able to go up. KSI is also green, so that means that the upside is there. Okay, upside is there. Oh, but it cannot go below OP. If it goes below OP, that will create the invert, it will create the pivot trade, and then that will bring it down back to this point again. That's 43. 27 level for the S&P. Now it's 43, now it's 43.65. So if it comes out, it's going to be a 30 point drop. Mm, then market may have to drop quite a fair bit again. So I think that uh, we just have to go slow and uh, make sure that if the market must stay above 43.59, okay, it has to stay above. Thank you, Fred, for reminding me. Thank you. I wonder if I find something interesting. Yeah, it's not easy to talk to myself and then do this MEO every morning. Uh, trust me on this. Other than you guys are responding to me, it's not easy. Sometimes I do get myself <laughs> in the wrong side. Okay, all right. So there's SMB 500. We talk about the uh, goal. Let's talk about the goal with our, our weekly chart on goal. The weekly chart on goal really seems that it's having no strength at the moment. So potentially more downside to go. All right, then of course we look at the goal, our TWB system. Okay, let's look at TWB system goal. Now the TWB system goal shows very clear why that goal price back then you have to cut loss. So imagine that time when we do a CCRY on the goal and then after that, unfortunately, immediately the color change over. And because of that, we had a cut loss here. We cut loss at 1788, remember? So look at it, the goal came all the way down to 1728. Oh my goodness. So that's the reason why if you look at it, if we don't cut our losses early and take some hit, we will lost another $60 downside. That's a lot of money. And because we flipped our position from a buyer to a seller, we managed to buy back our position with prompt profits. So again, that shows that you need to have your stop loss in place. You also must make sure that you know you can flip your position to profitability, all right? As long as you have the TWB system. Okay, so for today itself, right, the opening price of the gold market is between the pivot one and pivot two. Now, this morning itself, right, the market misses pivot one by uh, four cents. So I kind of suspect that later on, it should be able to touch the pivot one again. But if the market fail to you know, go higher and come back down, there will be a problem because the KSI is red, the blue bars are there, although it's KCX, but no color change yet, you can wait for a while. So if gold come down, break below OP1733, I suspect that gold will test the 1728 again. Now, yesterday it tested the 1728 brilliantly as if that you know it exists. But if the 1728 fail, then you have to go down to 1711, which is the P2, which can establish a cell. 
but you can go to 1707 and that is the next number for gold in terms of KCB below 1728. Now, my view is this, I said, I suspect that gold price may fall again in the afternoon session once there is more uptick on the US 10 year yield, okay? Today is at 1.555%. If it goes down, if the yield goes up higher to 1.65%, I believe that gold will likely see 1728 or worse, 1707 first, okay? So gold traders wait for a while, no need to jump in. I told you guys, go slow wait for a while, okay? Now, silver is different. You see, silver, you see yesterday, gold came down almost near the low right of the day, but silver is off the low, and it seems that silver has found its new pals. All right, so silver, I told you right, around this area, seemingly very strong support, and that's $22.24 right up there. And I did tell you this, when the price comes down to this point, buy some, okay, just buy a bit. Then after that, if it goes down, don't worry, there's nothing to be worried about. All right, remember, don't need to buy too many, but you can remember that, okay, $22.24 is a very good technical point to consider. Okay, so that is silver. Let's look at crude oil. Now, crude oil. Oil chart, yeah. Crude oil really hit the technical point. I told you $75.76 really triggered. And then what happened? After it got triggered, it couldn't go higher, it pulled back. Okay, so you can see that that is exactly the same thing I mentioned yesterday. Now, for today itself, right, the MLP will be here. Okay, and it seemingly have already uh, have some movement there. So as long as MP, uh, sorry, as long as crude oil stays below the MLP, 24, 24, it should be going down. Okay, going down too much here. So my view is this, I'm bullish in crude oil, but if it comes down here or somewhere in the midpoint, it'd be a good point, and then we can buy up again. And this time around, I suspect it will go even higher. Okay, so that is crude oil. Sorry, my, my picture is blocking you guys a little bit. Okay, uh, uh, crude oil. Okay, so crude oil today, oh, interesting. The opening price already below people two, below OP, below people two is a sell, but the KSI is green. So the downside is gonna be limited. The upside, as long as it recovers above OP, Back to 75.64, it could be a buy up again. All right, now for you, for me, is this if you were to tell me what I'm looking at, likely something like this and like this. Okay, so I suspect that there could be some support around here at about $71 around there. And then after that, you should be able to bring it up all the way to as much as $79. Okay, all right, so let's see whether uh, my this analysis will come true. All right, for crude oil. Okay, all right, so that is crude oil and I cover all the commodities and last but not least is a Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin yesterday continued to go down lower. This morning, Bitcoin went down to 40,000, really hit my target level already, right? My first target level almost is having triggered. So I believe my Bitcoin probably have been done at 40,800 been done, okay, nice. Now, last time, the last few times, it basically touches it. Each time it recovers, man. So there is a possibility that this may also be happening also again, okay? This is possible that it may happen again. All right, if it goes down lower, like I told you before, I'm not half surprised, 39,700 and 38,000 will be the level that I think that we can look at it at the back. We can buy more of this level. Because you can see that although the price is coming down, the KSI has been turning green. So again, very different from traditional indicator. Traditional indicator is uh, when the price is coming down, the indicator goes down, right? But look at it, our indicator actually goes green. That means that although Bitcoin is coming down, the buyers are actually there. Really, again, very incredible analysis. So I'm not half surprised later on and stuff, right? If the market goes up, right? It may bring up the Bitcoin all the way back to about 47,000, all right? Hopefully that you guys are gonna make some money from this. This is the Bitcoin. Last one is Ethereum. Let's take a look at Ethereum. Now, Ethereum, uh, I already told you Ethereum will come down to 2700. Um, yesterday didn't hit. Okay, so I'm going to write there 2700 will be a good price to buy Ethereum. 2480 will be even better. But uh, 
we won't know how much we go down, but the thing is that the KSI is green and the blue bars are there. So if there's going to be any like sudden news and you know, China thingy come down and you break down, I will say that this is a very good time to buy. Now, my view is still the same. I still believe that this uh, Ethereum would be able to cross 4,200 to as much as 5,000. Okay, so traders, if you think that uh, you don't mind taking a risk, when you have a double effect, then look out for 2480. This level will be good because if you come down to this point, if you buy on the Bitcoin, I mean Ethereum, and if it goes up to 4,000 or 5,000, you may make quite one time of your full of your money. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, so that will be the Ethereum chart and the Bitcoin chart sharing. Okay, then that will be all for this morning. Once again, thank you guys. All right, pretty, pretty clear. Uh, I managed to finish up before the one hour comes. All right, I hope that you guys make money. And of course, don't forget later on at this 2 p.m., we will have our TWB Super Tuesday. Yesterday, we had missed it because I have a last minute thing to handle. Today, we we, we will do it at, we conduct at 2 p.m., okay? See you guys at 2 p.m. This is Cal signing off and all the best.